What's up, family? This is Jessica Caremore checking in from Detroit. I'm really, really excited to be a part of Elevate with my ATL family. I lived in Southwest for seven years. It was my home. It's my, where my son was born, where he was conceived. And um, ATL is my is one of my second homes. And really honored to be here with some of my favorite artists. Shout out to Russell Gunn and Kebby Williams and Dion Ferris and my sisters Lay Nubian. Um, those are all, art, all artists that I love very much. And, um, and I miss playing with y'all. And I miss uh, seeing you in real life. So I'm gonna share some poems. I'm gonna start um, from God is Not an American, which the book I wrote when I left Atlanta and moved back home. Um, but so some of the poems are me in Detroit um, studying my life over um, back in my hometown and um, also many poems that were inspired by living in Atlanta. And so I was gonna ask you as a poem that I wrote um, for Seku Sundiata and I was asked by the National Black Arts Festival to host a conversation with one of my poetic fathers at the time and poetry and musical inspirations outside of Gil Scott Heron with Seku Sundiata. And unfortunately, Sekou died just a few days um, before his anticipated arrival into Atlanta in 2007, where we would be having this incredible conversation. So instead, I would um, help put together a tribute and I wrote a poem and shared it that night. And so I want to share it with you all um, since this, it was written in Atlanta. I was going to ask you. I was hoping to ask you, where do you see the 51st dream state? I wonder if you are there now. Are we free there? Is it a physical place? Is it a spiritual space? Are there Afro-Caribbean drums playing? Would you please leave us the roadmap? These us young poets are lost. We are playing Scrabble with no direction, no dictionary, no history, no respect. We want a double word slam score with no skills or real letters. That's why I'm so bored with this game. No, this gift. Would you run for President Barack as your running mate? That would be a beautiful poster. Do they finally understand that we are the dream, Sekou? How do we thank you for your songs, for thinking outside the box, for your grace, your Kwame Ture voice, your John Coltrane smooth rhythm? You remind us of all our daddies, a long Cadillacs and 120 feet strip 125th Street vendors, slick hats and goatee gangsters, teach us how to do it, say cool, with ease, with tall black man style. Show them how to dress for the poem, conjure the ancestors by simply walking up and not just in the morning, by simply waking up, but not just in the morning, how to love with a heart of glass, with a stolen heart, a middle passage heart, Kazi's heart, a heart that beats to miles and writes with the memories we aren't supposed to remember. Teach us how to love with a heart of brick, a house of pain and shoes not easy to fill. Seku, so full of black stories, biting away at these peculiar institutions with griot tongue and emancipated language. Atlanta needed you more than any place in Europe that puts your photo on the side of a bus or on large billboards and be able to deconstruct your work or have heady discussions around your life work, your philanthropy, your performances. We needed you so we could better understand who we are. We need more therapy for the schizophrenia, the slavery, the self-hate, because we are all from the South at some point, because we are all from the South at some point. No DNA test necessary. And you represent the continuum of our roots, our passion, our secrets, our survival, our bloodline. I was going to tell you that some of us knew you as the superhero Lang professor with a double life, a poet who translated our existence by night, the brilliance of your sound, the urgency of your message, the importance of your existence, the love in your heart, the respect for your craft will live on inside the breath wind of Harlem children, on the tide of every boat you have blessed, every student you have touched. We will continue to live inside the blue oneness of the dream you always dreamt for us. I was gonna ask you about all of this, say who? So now I have, I can't wait to hear your answers. So that's on the occasion of Sekou Sundiata passing away um, before coming to Atlanta. And so we have to continue to talk to our ancestors and our literary mothers and fathers, right? Um, who stay with us and, and push us along on this journey. I am a, a child of the black arts movement, so I write um, in the tradition of Amiri Baraka and Sonia Sanchez and Jane Cortez and 
Lucille Clifton and, and countless others um, who guided me along the way, the last poets. So this is a poem I wrote for Sonia Sanchez when she turned 71 and she just turned 86. In my new book, I have a poem for her when she turned 80. And so honored to know her as sister, as mother, as friend. And this is called Recipe for Survival. And I think we all need the, those recipes right now. The year of my birth, you wear smooth as silk and feathers, water voice and theater hands easy on the road, Paris, Detroit, Philly, Dallas. On Sunday, you will sleep. Watch a comedy to boost your immune system. I call you to thank you for the organic fruit, almonds, strawberries, and apples that taste like apples. Teaching me to survive being a poet at 33. Giving me the strength to schedule in our breathing on Fridays so we can teach on Saturdays, sign books for three hours, and smile. Remember why we write. Take time to get better. Live enough hours to create new stories. One part water, two tablespoons of aloe vera juice, mornings mixed with apple cider vinegar, always honey, always sweet. To see you so full of moonlight in my hometown, talking about our generation and yours, these Motor City streets blending with the sound of your voice. You a poet, woman with swagger, integrity, and love, and you give me no reason not, not to continue to search for our humanity inside hand-me-down poems or recipes for survival when you're born in this skin in this place they call America. What do we have left to pass down more important than love? That's a short poem for Sonia Sanchez. Um, so this is my fourth book, Sound Like Do Bullet Holes. And I call these, all these are my jazz poems. You know, um, I did an album called Black Tea, The Legend of Jesse James that my dear friend Talib Kweli put out. And um, on my tour, I came through Southwest, of course, uh, came through Atlanta. Um, I want to just shout out, you know, just, you know, Apache Cafe, where I did a lot of a lot of work back in the day and in all those beautiful spaces um, that I miss. Roddy Playhouse and shout, shout out to the gallery. I'm um, Kevin Galley's gallery in Southwest that's doing um, incredible work. And we need museums and we need performance art spaces um, and curators that uh, know black art and understand the importance of um, putting us in the front you know, not as a side act, but as the main, um, as the main stage act. And so, yeah, shout out to all the love. And I miss y'all Atlanta. So this is called You Want Poems. And this this poem I'm really proud of because if you go um, to the Smithsonian Museum, African American History to the fourth floor, um, my poem, a piece of this poem is uh, on display with video and text. So um, yeah, You Want Poems. It's, it's the balance, you know, as a poet, who's always in love somehow with just the world. I'm in love with the, with the idea of like loving because um, it makes us human to love, you know? Um, and so I believe in it, uh, even though it like puts me through all these things, right? Um, I still believe in it. So it's called You Want Poems. On my album in Jose James is uh, crooning behind me on it. It's beautiful. And Roy Ayers is uh, playing vibes. And uh, hopefully me and Roy, uh, we had a scheduled gig. We'll get to, to play this song out loud one day soon. When you are a woman, when you are brown, when you are brave, when you walk over glass like water, when you know your eyes are borrowed like time, when you peel off your skin for the very first time, fear is never in style in the Mecca of the blue. Fear never lives in the gut of the new. You want poems and I want to build my home. You want poems and I just want love in my hands. You want poems and I'm not interested in fans. You love me inside my magic and I just want you to see you already had it. It is the telling when someone asks. It's the way he holds the glass, licks the surface, examines without touching. It's the way our energy takes over rooms. It is the subtle conversation. It is the freedom of emancipated language. It is words scribbled inside my skin. It's the curve of the line, the beauty of the lies. Stories passed down to generations of pain and pride, ocean and tide. Water remembers, water returns, African mermaids blending with dark sand. It is the danger of the dance, the upright heart of the bass, the dice drum, the simple tease, the last laugh, the addiction to this moment. Where else do I put it? Don't know where to put it, place it, bury it deep in my chest, back of my throat. Where should I hide it on this stage? Should I give it to you? Here is my honesty, my work undressed, legs stretched across piano, traded like cattle, raped like animal, left for dead, sucked dry for inspiration, in love with the idea of living long enough to simply write about it, push it up my body and watch my body slowly, 
push it out my body and watch my push it out my stomach and watch my body slowly grow into it. You said you wanted a phone. Now what you gonna do with it? Huh? Whitney, Etta, Abby, Billy, Nina, Phyllis. How much time you got? How much time you got? I'm a body of clocks. I'm a master of mics. I'm a metaphor for survival. I'm the goal they use to build their churches. A beautiful idea to flirt with, but who should I marry? The moonlight, the sunrise, a white dove, a wolf, some Eastern music, a prayer. How many babies we gonna make inside a song? Which revolution, which nation shall we rule? The island of the spirit world, the beauty of the believers, the carpenters, the men who build the dream and place you on the front line of their planet. One day, the stars will lie up between breath and ink and voice, between reality and choice. It is the danger of the dance, the upright heart of the bass, the dice throw drum, the symbol tease, the last laugh, the addiction to this moment. Okay. Okay. What did I say? Oh, push it on my body and watch my son slowly grow into I'm really like a nerd stickler with like my language. So I will go back and say a line like three or four times to make sure I get it out the way I intended it to get out. Um, so now I think um, I might come back to this, but I'm going to move to my, my newer book. This is also a book. I, I wrote this book in Atlanta, um, living in Southwest, the Alpha versus the Ghetto. I'm pretty sure I wrote this in, yeah, I wrote this in the A. So maybe I'll find, I'll find something in there. Um, but this is my new book. <laughs> we want our bodies back. And it's out now. Please go get it. If you have not ordered it, it's available in all the places. Um, really proud to be the first black woman poet on HarperCollins since Gwendolyn Brooks. Okay, I'm going to read something different. So this is called She Was. Um, um, this is a shout out to any woman who's ever attempted marriage or two. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's about the balance again of love. And I'm always making jokes about myself about uh, the, the different times I've been in love and been married. And I say, you know, at least I'm trying. Um, but uh, this is how she was. And I, oh yeah, Radcliffe Bailey. Shout out to Radcliffe Bailey, who's, uh, who's in this poem. Uh, I did my first artist residency with Radcliffe Bailey in New Smyrna, Florida, many years ago. And now because of him and his um, belief in my ability to actually make art beyond, beyond language on a page and performance, I do collage on canvas um, and do conceptual work. And so I'm actually working on a new conceptual art installation now. Um, so yeah, shout out to Radcliffe Bailey. But um, I mentioned us going thrifting um, in this piece where I kind of found actually this really beautiful sculpture, this this woman who was an Afro lamp that was cut up into pieces. Um, and I found her in pieces, literally, and she had an Afro and it was just this amazing um, piece of, uh, a box of broken up black woman <laughs> in, with the Afro um, statue that I put back together. And uh, it was kind of a metaphor for me putting myself back together. And so maybe I'll show it to y'all <laughs> before we get off. But anyway, it's called She Was. I have convinced myself, I have convinced myself, I speak French. Somehow I'll find a way to make a perfect sound, an un-English. I don't know what else to do with this language except murder it, dig out its eyes every vowel till it suffocates, choke the breath out this alphabet. I need more than 26 letters to articulate how I survived you, how we survived calculated attempts to blow the heads off our sons, slavery in a digital world. I have buried all the men I have loved and will ever love before you could get to them. Now what, motherfucker? I won't allow you the privilege of their death. You will not capture my personal ghosts, make them your public prize. I will swallow them down, said a whiskey straight, but you don't drink, poet. The round table turns square. I'm not drunk enough to make a clear sentence. I prefer a sober hallucination. The pill of this country is difficult enough to chase. Water, no ice, is watching me dance with myself and everyone else in this cynical room. You know I'm making love to you. I don't have to tell you your ear is attached to the side of your head. These few seconds pulled against your chest is honeymoon in Jamaica. The editors are resisting my twist and plot. We pose for a photo. That is really not about the photo. Is this a poem or a romance? The poems know I got a trail of hearts following behind. The train tied around my wa waist, dragging loud, empty can ideas left over from one of those marriages. So long ago, I can't remember what I wore underneath. 
Poems never really want to commit. Why are you putting on that red dress to camouflage the bloodshed of the off-white failure? Baba Tunde played drums. Imani Azuri sang. Veil full of ivory cowries couldn't turn the cloisters into, into the door. No return. We always return in new forms. Horses, red dresses, convertible Mustang, quite gangster. My daddy must have yelled from his Madison, Alabama grave. I will kill him because our daddy would have whisper my brother Ed pacing in front of our one our 3000 square foot lie Jessica is always in love love is a distraction from love life is a conceptual art installation I found my body in ceramic pieces thrifting in New Smyrna Florida with Radcliffe Bailey plastered Afro Yemaya left hand removed decapitated flower thick white curls stood in place despite the nets used to be somebody's light she spoke French Senegalese dialect our bodies fell in love before they could hide the evidence re -glued our stories Queen Kuntas she wears the same mauve petals my grandmother wore in the one photo I possess of her. You get used to not ever knowing your grandparents. Figure the ocean is our most authentic photo album. Ty, don't lie. Here comes another body crashing against the family tree. We just know we moors conquered Spain. There's that one photo my daddy kept of my great grandfather in full feather headdress. My indigenous DNA test wasted traces of Southern comfort, shotguns, deer meat, Afro still in place. Piss test found Nat Turner promises in one page of his Bible. Piss test swam to Huntsville, well full of moonshine and moonlight. How can one bladder hold all that water? You got an ocean between your legs, girl. Oh, y'all laughed. Aretha died a little more every time he played the record Naima inspired Naima what else do you want from us you never forget the ones you killed early they haunt you you will not have my sons Equite. you will not have my sons I don't know what else to do with this language except kill it. Marriage isn't for everyone, said the woman who wants to fuck my husband. She was right, but death is a commitment we all make. Who will pick out my dress? Who will interrupt? Who will refuse this wedding to continue? The flower girl got my grandmama's eyes and Mary Baraka got my daddy's moonshine in his left pocket. Her body ashes along an amethyst skyline, convertible white caddy racing across the clouds, body pushing hard against the wind, decapitated afro pitchfork combs through nappy deferred dreams. She was perfectly positioned for takeoff. Check the skies for the purple smoke. Palms still recovering from the self-inflicted fire. I promise she was somebody's light. And so I'm going to continue with the time I have left and continue and uh, we want our bodies back. Um, I want to read this poem, Where Are the People? For my people in Southwest Atlanta, I know that Atlanta, like every other city uh, with black and brown bodies, um, is being colonized and gentrified at a rapid pace. Um, to be honest, when I come back to Atlanta, I, I really don't know <laughs> where to go. I just go to my old spots. I'd be hitting up a soul vegetarian, you know. I just go to the spots that I know. Um, and I'm sure there's some great new places, but, you know, I'm kind of old school with it. Um, but I want to, this is called Where Are the People? And I wrote it for the people we cannot locate. Me and my son were um, headed to, we, we just got a pizza. And by accident, they gave us a pepperoni pizza and we don't eat pepperoni. So I was driving up an area called Cass Corridor, uh, which they renamed Midtown in Detroit. And it's where I went to Wayne State University. And um, we couldn't find a person to get a pizza to. And like back in the day, well, let me just say not back in the day, I'm gonna say like five to eight years ago, we would have been able to find so many people to give a slice or a whole pizza to easily. And we drove for about 20 minutes and gave up, had to bring the pizza home. And so I came in the house and I wrote this poem um, called Where Are the People? And when I read it, I always think about my Baba, Mary Baraka. Um, but here it is. For the bodies we can no longer locate. Where are the one-way tickets? Who signed the death certificates? Where are the magicians, the madmen, the toothless, the smoothless, the poets, the corner store prophets, the bus stop historians? Where are the blues on the witch pile of gravel? Where are they buried? Hurricane cast corridor, hurricane cast corridor. Where is the soil, the soul, the socks, the soles, the shoes? Where is the soil, the soul, the socks, the soles, the shoes? Where is the heroin? Where are the pills? Where are the women? Where are the thrills? 
where is Cass Corridor? My student asked, is it a building? Is it this way? Is it that way? Your school is sitting in it. You is it? I answer. The dogs are walking the people. The dogs have parks. The parks don't have children. Where are the people? The stepped over, the forgotten Holocaust, the fragile, the beautiful, the fast talkers, the backward walkers, the 3 a.m. stalkers. Where did they take them? When will they return? Where is the balance? Where is the money? Where are the schools? Where are the people? We all got Wi-Fi. Nobody getting high outside. Where are they heads? Where are the beds? Where are the recognizable street signs? Where is Joe Lewis? Where are the black people? My white neighbor asked me, Jessica, where are the black people? Where are the chosen people? Where are our hearts, our guitars, our bass players, Kenny Mack, Anthony Tosa, rest in peace. Where are the anointed, the children of God? Where is the sage, the holy water? Where is the black imagination located? How much does it cost per square foot to rent there? Is there a rent to own your black imagination option? Is there a rent to own your own black imagination option? Where are the couples fighting in the alleys? Where are the purple flavor Mad Dog 2020 labels? Where are the needles? Where is the good time? Where did all these goddamn bike lanes come from? Where is the line to simply exist? Where is the painted line to live, to breathe? Where are the parks with swings? Where are the children supposed to live? Where are the children supposed to run? Where are the twilight tweezers, the moonlight mythology makers? Where are the military vets are mentally ill? Where are the people? Where are the people? Where are the people? San Francisco, Oakland, Harlem, Detroit, Atlanta, Minneapolis. Do you know? Do you know, huh? Have you all seen them? Do they all die so new Detroit could live? Do they all die so new Atlanta could live? Do they all die so new San Francisco could live? Where is your conscience? Where is this nonsense coming from? Where is humanity? Where are the people? Where are the people? The one-way tickets. The message is still in the bottle. Where are the indigenous? Where are the salt mines? Where are the people? Where are the people? Where are the people when you find them? Please tell them. I have an overpriced gentrified cheese and pork pizza with their names on it. Tell them I'm writing for them so they won't disappear without a fight. So I might have time maybe for one more. I don't know what my time is like, but I um, I want to I wanna read this poem. Um, this is for Ozzie Davis and Ruby D. I had the very distinct pleasure of knowing Ozzie Davis, um, of knowing Ruby D and reading with Ozzie Davis. I wouldn't say that I knew him, but I did get an opportunity to read with him at the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem many moons ago, um, where we still had Ruby with us. Um, and Ruby, I did uh, several readings with her and had a really cool interaction with her um, at the Schomburg that's in this poem. But uh, Ozzie Davis and Ruby D have been like my black love icon. So like my whole life, like I've just always been kind of in search of my Ozzie Davis, right? Um, which is, I think why I like very tall men, you know? Um, no offense to guys who are under six feet, I just, you know, it depends, it depends. So dear Ozzy, dear Ruby, it's for my black love icons um, that look over us. Uh, these, these people that call ourselves artists. Um, it showed us how to do it real early. Dear Ozzy, dear Ruby, do you still put roses in her hair? Do you still draw the clouds and fluff them for her head? Is the sun still sleeping in his eyes? Is heaven a place along his chest? Are you resting in a timeless embrace? Do you still make her laugh? Does it still matter? Do you hold her hands, diamonds, hidden sign palms from fingers? Is eternity inside his kiss? Do you tie his tie, adjust his chapeau? Do you dance in the morning? Do a Mary and Maya and Jane and Gil and say cool visit to drink grapes and share stories? Dear Ozzy, dear Ruby, some of us dare to be the exception, dare to be conductors of black love. Do you still love to be still while the world travels at full speed? How glorious to watch our attempts to become the black doves you became. Do you still fly south for the winter, pick pecans and eat round sweet cherries on a long wooden porch? Dear Ozzy, thank you for your kind words in Harlem. When I nervously share that abyssetting in stage with you, Dear Ruby, thank you for your fearlessness and hard laugh in the, Schom in the lobby of the Schomburg. I slapped Denzel Washington, an American gangster. It wasn't in the script, you told me. I can hear your beautiful stutter, planned pauses land gracefully on your tongue. Eagle woman, the morning of your funeral. I spent the evening celebrating our sister, Sonia Sanchez's 80th birthday. I watched her and Baba Haki get in a car headed to Harlem. I was in so much pain from losing a Miri. I wasn't ready to bury another legend. Forgive me, dear Ruby, dear Ozzy. 
We know we are possible. We know we can be gazelles on a planet surrounded by wolves. It's his voice, the sound of water. It's her smile, the perfect moonlight. Do you remember when it was all a dream? Do you still love to get on your toes to reach his nose, kiss his neck? Is she still your Juliet in a Spike Lee joint? Is he still the man, mother, sister? Dear Ozzy, dear Ruby, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving each other. We marvel in your reflection. Thank you for your life work, for your voices and bodies as gifts. Now that you are true stars, do you know you were our greatest wish? So that's for Ozzy Davis and Ruby D. Um, this is We Want Our Bodies Back. Um, I appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to poetry, this thing called poems. Um, I think I'm gonna have time for one more short one. And so I'll, I'll close with something that's not too long. Um, the poem I wrote for Sandra Bland in this book is um, has become a film called Our, Our Bodies Back, directed by MC and director choreographer Jonesy D out of the UK. So look for our, one, our, our Bodies Back film. Um, and it's actually on a billboard, a piece of it in Detroit right now. So shout out to Atlanta. Once again, I love you and all the artists who are there. Um, I was real close to my daddy. My daddy like influenced my in entire existence. And um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this Mother Earth prayer and with this short poem. Mother Earth prayer. You may want to reconsider only praying to your father for mankind, God. Considering the vulnerable state of humanity, you may want to call your mama. That's how I feel about what's happening in the world right now. This is for my daddy, January 3rd, 1994. Um, that's when I lost my pops, Tom Moore. I wanted to see my daddy's body. I wanted to see what they had done to him. Not the angels, not God. They didn't take him, I was convinced. He was tall and thin and Southern sophisticated, cool, mild and Southern comfort next to his bed, smile that could capture the attention of women half his age. I laid down in his twin bed the morning he died. I wanted to find the grooves of his body inside the fabric so I could bury myself of what inside what was left behind. A part of my body would always be dead after this day. I examined a house that was never my house. I searched for clues. I rolled my eyes at the strange man who was walking around. I didn't trust him or his smell or his eyes. I didn't trust the women who was my daddy's young girlfriend at the time of his death. I didn't trust many women after my daddy's body left Detroit. I wanted to see him. Why can't we see him? Henry Ford Hospital had his body somewhere. I forever hate hospitals. The doctor told my brother Johnny it would be better to just wait until he was prepared for the funeral. We left my daddy's bodies with these strangers. We left my daddy's body with these strangers. My brother didn't notice, but I was screaming. No one noticed, but I was flying. I was kicking the doctor in the gut and running down the white doorways to find my daddy's body so I could bring him back home with me. And so I give that to anyone who's lost um, family and people during COVID-19, during this pandemic. The, the racism pandemic is not a new one for any of us, but the pandemic of COVID-19 has hit um, the city of Detroit quite hard. And I know Atlanta has been feeling it. So um, y'all just keep staying at home and stay safe. And um, it is difficult because black folks, we really do like to, the ritual of seeing our people home, right? To our resting place or to a, a higher place is important for us. And we haven't been able to do that. And so just sitting and wrapping some, some love and some energy around people who have lost during this time. And let's keep elevating and thank you, Elevate, for having me. I love you, Southwest. I love you, ATL. I miss y'all very much. Um, you're an extended part of my of my artistic family, and I look forward to seeing all of y'all in real life real soon. Peace.